Hi guys, Anna here from YourArtPath.com and today I'm doing fan art on Witcher. Um, Witcher is a beloved fantasy series of novels and short stories. Um, it's a game series and now a TV show on Netflix. It was written by a Polish author, Andrzej Sapkowski, and I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat correctly. Uh, at the beginning in mid 1980s, uh, it's about Witcher who Gerald of Rivia, who in this fascinating world, hunts beasts. And um, witchers are just humans who at a young age develop supernatural abilities to battle with all of those monsters and creatures of this fantasy world. There are also three awesome games, Film the Hackser and two TV shows, one of which recently came out on Netflix and has been an absolute pleasure to watch. Um, Henry Cavill, whom you might also recognize from Tudors or Superman, is acting as Gerald of Rivia and does so really, really well in my opinion. He was able to portray that atmosphere of this character so well. And today I will be painting fan art for The Witcher, the TV show. I'm using a, um, iPad Pro 13 inches and Procreate app. I'm also going to be uploading some step-by-step -step work to my blog, yourartpath.com, at the end of which you can also get some free Procreate brushes from me as a gift. And um, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, so make sure to check out the links in the description for more content and leave a like, comment if you have any questions or feedback or ideas for future videos and give me a follow up if you would love to see more of my future content. All right, so this work took me about four hours to complete and for the sake of this video, I changed the speed of the recording to one thousand percent so it's not too long for you guys to watch and i can cover the most juicy parts of the process the video on the right i recorded with my canon camera and tripod and the one on the left is the recording of my ipad screen um not the one procreate automatically creates for you it's a separate one that i started so let me know in the comments if you like seeing the recording from the top with my hands doing the magic or if you feel that the recording on the left is more than enough. I'd love to know so I know what to create for the next videos. Okay, so I want to point out something um, that many beginner artists often misjudge. Um, I spent about one and a half hours just working on the sketch and a more refined sketch on top of that. And still the drawing wasn't perfect and had to be fixed a bit as I moved along with the painting. This is just kind of the process I go for. At the beginning I try to feel the mass of my subject, the weight, the basic shape and proportions, and only then I get into smaller and smaller shapes refining as I move along. But I never proceed until I'm pretty confident with the basic shapes. And I think it's important to notice when you watch this video. Uh, the fun parts at the end of adding some filters, highlights on the face and the eyes, they are so much fun, but they are just a cherry on top of a well-refined drawing. And um, if I left the sketch the way it turned out from the first try, all of the details wouldn't matter as the subject himself would look awkward and funny to your eyes with all of the mistakes in anatomy. So big picture is key here. And as you can see, um, I keep refining the drawing. I use the selection tool to select the parts I'm not sure of. I move them around, sketch some more, flip the canvas. Um, always try to see for, with like a fresh perspective. If you know what I mean, I am using a reference image that is right in front of me as I am drawing. It's a reference image on my phone, so it's pretty small, but uh, when you're just getting started with a drawing, it's good to have a small image or even a blurry image because then your eyes will not be focusing on the details rather than um, rather on the big shapes, which I find very, very important, especially at the beginning of your new drawing. Another thing I also do when sketching is 
you know, your eyes get used to all of the mistakes that you made and they start looking like a good thing. Uh, but we know it's not. And then tomorrow you could... Th well, okay, so did it ever happen to you that um, you create this drawing or painting and you're like, this is the best thing ever. I literally just spent five hours in this and I'm so proud of it. And oh my God, it's my best piece. And then you're so proud. You're sure of your friends and they're like, yeah, it's great. It's like, okay, it's great. And you're like, I don't get it. It's a masterpiece. It should be in some museum and all that stuff. But then you go to sleep and the next morning when you wake up, something magical happens in the sense that you look at your drawing and you're like, wow, this sucks. I don't know if that ever happened to you, but honestly, that happens to me way too often, or at least it used to. Right now, I wake up um, more and more and I'm actually happy with what turned out. I still see more mistakes than I see seen the day, the night before, but I am more happy now. So what changed from me being so frustrated uh, at in the morning by all the art I created versus uh, right now when I'm actually pretty satisfied and happy to see the work in the morning without being afraid it's going to be turned into disaster overnight. So the one thing that happened was, you see, when you wake up in the morning and you see your artwork again, you look at it with a fresh pair of eyes, with a pair of eyes that wasn't just staring at the screen or a piece of paper for the past three, four hours. Uh, it's the fresh eyes that just had some sleep and now you're back to being your normal self. So you start noticing all of the little and big mistakes that you made along the way. And you know what? It, it, it actually sucks uh, because uh, you wake up and you're so excited to see your work again. Maybe you want to post it on Instagram. Maybe you just want to share it with friends or just look at it for yourself and your own pleasure. But it turns out that it doesn't look so good. And it's not that overnight you have achieved some uh, perfect sight or you uh, improved your skill so much that now you're seeing all of the little mistakes. No, it's just that while you're drawing, you are seeing that work and all of the mistakes become not mistakes as the more you look at them and get used to them. So one of the things you could do is flip the canvas. That's why people flip canvas because um, you can notice all the mistakes since you are required to see your work from uh, the fresh perspective. And it doesn't even have to be only horizontal or vertical. You can flip, I mean, it, it could be horizontal or vertical. That's what I was trying to say. Um, and uh, I know that if you flip it vertical, it's more challenging, but it also is a brand new drawing to your eyes. Another thing that I try to do as I'm painting or as I'm drawing is while I'm looking at the big shapes at the beginning and then I get into small details, I like to always keep my canvas zoomed out a little bit so I can see the big picture. If I just focus on details, it's kind of hard to see mistakes because all you see is this one finger forgetting that it actually the hand is too big. And that's exactly what happened to me that I had to fix the hand, make it smaller because the hand was way bigger. And one way to check if your hand is uh, proportionate to the rest of your body. If it's not foreshortened, then all you have to do is do this exercise right now and you will remember this forever, but pretty much put your hand on your face. And as you can see that when you open your hand and put your palm on your chin, um, the tips of your fingers will be about in the middle of your forehead. So if you're eyeballing it, um, don't make the hand bigger than the face because, um, you know, it's gonna look weird. And if the hand is closed, imagine what it would look like if it was open and on the face. So that's kind of my um, idea on that. And look at the negative shapes. That also allows you to see your drawing from a different fresh perspective that you're not looking inside of the character that you're drawing, but you're also looking on the outside lines of what you are drawing. So as you probably noticed, by the time I was talking to you guys, uh, the time-lapse video showed how I created the rough sketch and I, another rough sketch on top of that that's more refined and then I colored the inside of the character in black. 
You've probably seen it before with other artists. It's pretty much done so that you have a strong shape, then you alpha lock that layer, and then you can paint on top of it without the paint leaving the already colored parts. It's actually really amazing and it's such a big time saver. You will see soon what I mean. But before I get to that, I always start with background first. And the reason for that is background is well it's far so it doesn't have to be detailed it doesn't have to be perfect it only has to be seen as the background so more blurry less saturated less details and so on so you just have to keep in mind that it's not the main focus but it does give the atmosphere and the feeling to the whole painting and right now I pulled up the palettes tab because um, before I started recording, I actually uploaded a picture that I'm referencing and I took some samples from it for my own reference. So I get the same mood. I could go ahead and try to eyeball it and I'm sure it would look just as fine. But um, I like having these swatches beside me so I get the basic feeling and then I can separate from it. I can add my own colors, I can change the colors completely, but I like starting with having a swatch. Sometimes I just use the swatch colors and nothing else. Sometimes I completely change them and it does end up looking very different. But in this case, I decided to go with this, with these colors and with this atmosphere. And you saw how quickly I filled up the character. If I didn't fill in the inside of the character and alpha locked it, it would take me a way longer time because I would be worried to get over the lines I created to ruin that shape that I designed with the sketch. But I wasn't worried because I alpha locked it and then I just painted on top and it was super, super fast. And now that I have all of my colors on the canvas there's nothing white in there i can begin adding bigger shapes as you can see i'm not focusing and zooming in on a nose or an eye and going detail no i am very far away and i continue working on these colors and this mood that is shown through this painting because that's the big picture and the big picture is always very important and as you can also see i am pretty zoomed out it's not even in full size of the ipad screen and i do that so i can see the big picture some artists um some amazing artists use in photoshop when they zoom in they would still have a window on the top right corner showing them what the big picture looks like and this is kind of the idea but because i don't have that other window i like working from far until i am ready to zoom in and work on more details like right now when i'm starting with the face i did all of my darkest darks and i did all of my mediums and now i'm adding some highlights and starting to refine starting to sculpt that and every time that I paint, I try to think what would it feel like to touch that part of the body, that bone or that fat or that skin. Uh, what's the texture? What's the feeling that I would feel? And that helps me create work. It might sound funny, but I actually learned it from my professor in school who said before you create a figure drawing, it was a figure drawing class, she said before you create a figure drawing, imagine what the body would feel like if you touched it and that helps your lines be more fluid and also it helps you understand where are the points in the drawing or in the character that go down or up that have different shapes you know what i mean so i always try to imagine what it would feel like to touch that part of the body before i paint it and it's very helpful you should try it sometime um it helps you understand the anatomy as well and if you're not sure about something always touch your face your face is the best thing you can use for your drawings i know a lot of people would buy um dolls and skulls and those are all amazing and you should totally get them if you want to play with all this anatomy but you can always just close your eyes and follow with one finger around your face what do you feel uh is that a bump or are, is your finger going inside um and 
it will help you understand your anatomy much, much better. Uh, so I'm pretty much just using one brush for this. I'm experimenting later with some other brushes, the new brushes from Procreate, but as I'm not used to them, um, I just kind of use them for texture at some point, and, um, but that's about it. I usually just use one brush um, that's called All. I called it because I made it, and I honestly just use it for pretty much everything in this piece, apart from some texture and his clothing. And stuff like that. Um, as you can see the videos didn't sync properly so they used to be fine but right now one is faster than the other but I guess it's uh, alright to watch anyway and if you miss something you can always look on the at the other video. With the t-shirt I also just try to see the big picture where does the light hitting it? Where is Where are those the deep uh, pockets of shadow and where are those highlights just for the basic volume uh, all I care about at the moment um, is volume because I already took care of the colors and the atmosphere so now it's all about making it look believable like the character is actually in that picture as you can see I'm playing with changing the background because I'm not too happy with how close the values and the colors are of the main character and the background and I end up actually not changing the background and continue working on the character but spoiler alert by the end of this video I change the look of the character entirely because I am still not satisfied uh, for the hair sometimes I use a regular brush and sometimes I use this hairbrush that I'm using right now for his hair and this is a brush you can get for free on my website when you click the link uh, in the description. I'm giving it away. Um, so if you want it, you can have it. It's uh, really easy to use. It's just like three strokes um, and you just kind of paint hair with it. I suggest starting with uh, big size of the brush and uh, full opacity and then smaller size, smaller opacity or the other way around, it um, should be fine as long as you have some differentiation and not just one size, one opacity, one color and then it looks funny and it won't be helpful. Um, in my work I think I try to figure out how can I make more art in less time while still having the quality that I want and some ways for me to do it would be to use different brushes for texture and for hair and stuff like that um, but otherwise I just keep working on it and the more I work the more art I create the faster the process is going so that's always fun to see when I used to spend uh, 20 hours on a painting then 10 hours then 8 hours and now um, I spend about three to five hours on a piece and while it doesn't look 100% finished um, as long as I'm pretty happy with it I just finish you know um, the painting is only finished once you kind of abandoned it because I believe you can always make better choices better decisions better strokes better textures painting is such a huge process there are so many different things involved that if you focus on just one at a time you can literally spend hundreds of hours on a painting before it's finally done and then um, when you look at it again a few months later you will see that it's not actually done and you can still probably add some more stuff so I don't want to be that perfectionist I just want to bring it to the point where I'm like yep this is cool and if I think it's cool then I just pretty much kind of finish for the day. So this one took me four hours um, and it was super fun to paint and while I was painting I was actually re-watching uh, Witcher on Netflix and uh, that helped with the atmosphere. I think um, when you're painting you should um, watch or listen to music or do something else 
that helps with the atmosphere you're trying to create with your painting. At least it helps me and it's always fun and if I want to create something happy I, I watch cartoons or listen to have music and if I want to create something sad I listen to sad music or like drama movies or something. Um, it just helps my mood um, be consistent with the work I'm creating. So for this time as I continue painting it I am pretty much super close to where I want to be I'm already adding details I added highlights um, not all of them yet but I'm continually add more highlights more shadows more highlights more shadows and try to work at a particular area at a time uh, something like a face, I try to work on it and then move to another part of the painting and then work on it again and then move to another part again and uh, I think that just helps me um, not get used to the mistakes as much so that after I work on the hand I'll be back to work on the face and I will see it with little fresher eyes if you could say so and it will help me make better choices on how to continue working on it. If I just work on the face for the next hour um, it will look perfect to me and in reality it won't be. I guess it, it's kind of the theme of this video now of um, how to see your work with fresh eyes and make better choices you know because it's definitely very very important to um, f understand how your choices work uh, because most of them are not conscious choices and because that's the truth uh, we have to be consciously aware of how to improve uh, our unconscious choices. Uh, right now I also selected a noise brush and uh, a color that would be for his not beard um, but whatever's left of his beard uh, just to add that texture and um, make it look more blue because usually for men um, if they have beer or they shave, the lower part of, the, of their um, face is more blue or more green. But in this case, the whole painting is like blue-green, so it just kind of works all together. And making these final choices is always very fun. So in this instance, I decided to add some backlight because I think it will really make him pop. It's not on the reference image, but... I am not trying to copy the photograph and I am trying to create a fan art that also speaks to me and how I see this character. So I added this backlight and I think it really really um, helped this piece and helped him separate from the background. I then duplicated it and blurred the second part a bit and lowered the opacity and just made it a little more believable which was really really fun. So on the left I'm still experimenting with how to change the stuff, how to change him, how to make him look better. I play with levels, exposure, brightness and everything and then I end up changing the colors of the main character a little bit which you can see on the right he is now more towards blue which helped him pop from the background. I also added contrast and I added noise to him and to the background which really brought everything together and made this look like a more believable piece of work. And I honestly I think it look, looks pretty good. Um, there are definitely parts that I'm not happy with. Uh, which I of course noticed uh, the morning after and if I could change anything I would change how his left hand is very bright, I would make it darker and um, just little things here and there that are kind of annoying to me but that's the beauty of art, you can always go back and change it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please leave a like, comment, subscribe and uh, let me know what you thought. Thank you for watching. It was Anna from YourArtPath.com and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.